Hey folks, this is Aaron Humiston. I was asked to create a tutorial using the Rough Animator app for Android devices. So I figured what better excuse to take my tablet outside and use the mobility of Rough Animator to its full potential. So I'm just out at the local park out here. Uh, we're just going to go over the basics. If you follow along, hopefully this will be helpful to you. Alright, let's do this. Alright, for those of you interested, I'm going to be using a Samsung Galaxy Note Pro. I have a Wacom stylus that I use. I like it more because it feels like a normal pen. I may be wrong, but I think that it has a little bit more response as far as the pressure sensitivity is concerned. So just a little plug out for Wacom. They built a really great stylus. Okay, so let's get started. This is Rough Animator. It may seem a little intimidating at first, but uh, it's actually really user-friendly in my opinion. But let's go over the interface first. Uh, to start this off, I am a lefty, so I have everything set up for left-handed. You can change the settings between left and right-handed in the uh, project options area right here, and I'll show you that later. As far as the overall uh, interface, this will be your main place where you're going to be drawing. This is your canvas. And up here is your timeline. So how this works is these little blue boxes are your drawings. So when we actually draw in the canvas, it's going to be represented in this little blue box next to where your layers are. It just starts you off with just a default layer one. You can double click that and rename it to whatever layer you like. And uh, over here is your layer opacity. So uh, if you want to see your layer at like 50% opacity, you can just bump that ticker down to halfway and, and you can change the opacity to however you like. Now over here are your brushes. As of right now, Rough Animator only gives you three brushes. This is my favorite one. I just call it the pencil brush because it has a nice pencil texture to it. This is just more of like a faded brush. And then here's your hard edged brush if you want to do some fine line inking or whatever. Here is the color of your brushes. You gotta move your RGB around to change the color. Here's your opacity for your brush, the spacing for your brush and the brush size. Just to switch up however you want to uh, customize your brush. And then down here we have brush front and brush behind. Brush front means when you lay down a line, it's going to place the line over the top of whatever you have drawn on here. What is nice is they also have a brush behind, where if you lay down a line, it will always show up behind whatever lines that are already placed on there. So that's, that's nice if you want to uh, do some coloring or something and you want to stay on the same layer. I use different layers. But uh, if you want to color on the same layer, brush behind is perfect. So that's just all based off of drawing on Rough Animator, but of course this is an animation software. So that's where all these come in and all this comes in. So we have add drawing. That's of course your, once you start off your animation, you're going to add more drawings to animate them. So that's your add drawing. DUP drawing stands for duplicate drawing. It's, it would just take the drawing you're currently at and copy it over. Delete your drawing will delete the frame off of your timeline. Clear means that it won't delete the frame, but it will clear your canvas and it'll just place an empty drawing where that once was. Layer options, layer names, add layer, tool options, that's all associated with your layers over here. Add layer, of course, will add another layer. Here's all the different tools you have, paint bucket, uh, your brush, your eraser, and then your select tool. Here's your uh, undo and redo buttons down here. Here's your play. If you hit the play button, it'll play the animation you're working on. And then here's your forward and back, so you can flip forward and backward through your frames. And then onion, that's your onion skin. You can turn that on and off. And these little ticks down here are directly related to your onion skin. Those are the drawings that you'll see in your onion skin ahead and behind the drawing you're currently on. Okay. That's the interface for you in a nutshell, and let's start animating. Right now, we have two layers set up. Layer one, that's the layer I'm currently on, and then below it, you'll see a little layer that says B underneath. That's your background layer. So you really can't animate the background because it's just, it's just, it's set up to be just one drawing that represents the, the backdrop of your scene. So currently we're in layer one. If we want to change the name, just double click, just call this rough. So here's our rough layer. Let's start drawing. I, I love using the uh, pencil. 
it has this nice rough line to it, and I'm drawing in the canvas. Now, what's cool about this, if you're working on a smaller screen, like a phone or something, it comes with this cool little option, these arrows up here, if you click that, it'll bump your canvas to full screen, and so you'll just have all this extra canvas space to work with. But the only catch with this is that you have to constantly be bouncing back and forth whenever you want to start messing with your animation. But as far as just getting the drawings in, and you want a lot of canvas space, it's a nice option to have. Alright, so I'm not going to go nuts with this. So I have my first drawing. We can change the timing of the drawing, and that's this drawing duration up here. Currently I have the drawing set to one frame. You can see the one right here. But let's make it four frames. So I'll take this and stretch it up to four frames. And now you can see my timeline just extended that drawing from where it was one frame, now it's four. Now here's your timeline itself. Up here it shows just these little marks that represent how many frames long your entire project is. But uh, here's this one drawing that's four frames, and as you can see your background stretched out to four frames as well. Alright, so now we have four frames. Now I want to add a drawing. Now it's asking, do you want to add a drawing after this one, or do you want to split it halfway? I add one after, and it copies the same timing as the frame I had before. So since I had four frames before, it added another four frame drawing, and it cleared my canvas because this is a brand new drawing. This is where onion skin comes in, because I want to reference the original drawing I did. So I'll click onion down here. Sometimes it won't turn on automatically, I have to make a little tick on the canvas for it to pop up, but there it is. And from here, let's say I want him to blink. So I'll bring his head down a little bit, close his eyes, and as you can see, I'm referencing the first drawing I did in my onion skin. And there we go. And now I have a blink. I can turn my onion skin off. Now here's this little thing up here. This is what you can use to scrub your animation. If you click and drag it left and right, now I can see my two drawings playing against each other by scrubbing back and forth. So let me just show you what happens if we do the add half. Here back on my first frame, add drawing, add split halfway, and what it did was it took my four frame drawing and it split it in half, so now it's two frames and it added a new blank frame split halfway between what it was before. So now I have an in-between. Let's turn my onion skin back on, and since I have it set to one drawing before and after, I should be able to see both my drawings, and there you have it. So now I can in-between these two drawings. There we go. Now let's scrub between all three. I'm going to turn my onion skin back off. And there's my in-between. Yay! Let's do a new drawing. Add drawing. Add after. Turn my onion skin back on. Let's have him turn around. Okay, so let's go back to my old drawing. I'll add after, and it moved the drawing I had after it over four frames and placed in a new blank frame between. So now, let's say that you, you weren't happy with the onion skin, maybe it's too light or too dark. We can change that by going to project options, and you have all these different options. You can import audio, import an image, export your mp4 video, export a gif, export png sequence, change your frame rate, change your resolution, change background color, and that's what we're going to go to, app preferences. This is pretty self-explanatory for all of these. I have left-handed interface turned on. I have pen-only drawing mode, so you can't draw with your fingers on accident. Onion skin opacity. Now, once we click that, we can change the opacity of our onion skin between 10%. You can barely see it, because it's only at 10%, all the way up to 90%, where you can really see both drawings. Find that right setting for your personal preference, and then there you go, happy animating. I'll just be really rough and quick about this. So hopefully you just get the idea. Right, so now I have a blink and then a look to the side. Blink, look to the side. And let's hold that end drawing. Let's bump it up to 12. Now that I have like a little mini animation set up for me, I can hit the play button down here and see it play in real time. Pretty cool, huh? Another really cool feature with this app is the ability to move your frames around. So let's say I want to make this a cycle. 
so I want to cycle back to my first frame. As you can see, my onion skin doesn't show my first frame. So I'll go back to my first frame. I'll duplicate the drawing by clicking this dupe drawing button. Duplicate after. It made a new frame, which is a duplicate of the drawing. And I want to take that drawing and bring it all the way to the end of my animation. So I'm going to use these buttons over here, move back and move forward. Make sure you have the proper frame selected. Once you click move forward, It'll scoot that frame forward in the timeline, scooting all the other frames back. So I clicked it a few times to move it all the way to the end of my animation. And now if I want to do my in-between, I will add drawing, add split halfway. And now I have the same drawing at the beginning and at the end of my animation. So now I can in-between and cycle back to my first drawing. I believe as long as it's on the same layer, you can move and rearrange any of your drawings or frames anywhere you please by using this move forward and move back button. It's really handy. And there we go. So if you want to dive into cleanups, how I typically do it is I will add a layer over here. This is a really cool option. It gives you, you can just start off with an empty layer or you can copy the timing to blank drawings. Or you can copy the drawings, it'll just copy the whole thing to a new layer. But if you copy the timing to blank drawings, it'll give you a rough copy, and we'll call this cleanups. And they're going to be blank drawings. If I, if I turn off the opacity of my rough, these are just blank drawings, but what's nice is that it's set up to the same timing as the layer that you just copied. So we can just automatically jump right into cleanup over our old drawings. It's all on a new layer, and the timing's already set for you. You just need to throw in those drawings. And then I can turn off, turn down opacity of the underdrawing, and now I have not a very good cleanup, but a cleanup nonetheless. And then we can do this again. We'll uh, add a new layer, copy the timing, and we'll call this one color. So since the color right now is above the cleanups layer, if I color, it's going to appear over the top of my character. Uh, we don't want that. We want it to be underneath. So what we're going to do is click that little down button right there. It scooted my color layer underneath my cleanups layer. And now my color layer is underneath. So like I said, if you want to color on the same layer, you do have this brush behind option. But I just use separate layers because that way it gives me a little more wiggle room and unless I want to change the color and I don't have to worry about it affecting my my drawing layer or anything. So there you go, and you just go through the same motions as I showed you through the rough layer. Hopefully in the end you'll have a pretty sweet looking animation, all from the comfort of wherever you wish. And in my case, it's this pretty little park. So go out, start animating at the airport, start animating on the bus stop, animate wherever you want, thanks to this nifty little app called Rough Animator. Hey folks, just wanted to say thank you one last time for checking out my video. I hope you found it helpful. Uh, if you want, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. And uh, if you liked it, there is that little like button down there. It's always appreciated. And if you have any animator friends or colleagues, feel free to share this video with them. It would be appreciated. If you aren't already, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, I'm on Facebook, Tumblr, and DeviantArt if you want to check out my non-animated artwork. A special thanks to Nico for his awesome music. Check him out on SoundCloud. He's got a lot of really cool music. The link is in the description. And uh, yeah, thanks again, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Have a great day. Bye.